And when he would come over, we always had to leave the door open. We could never be by ourselves. This is 21 years 21. old, by the way. It's all about trying to scare the kids into not doing it. Every Wednesday, we would all go to the store, get our new Bravo. Of course, it wasn't just about that part, but it was also about that. <laughs> Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. And one of the topics that I was really shocked about when I first came to the US and started to have deeper conversations with my American friends was how different our countries approach sex education and sexuality in general. I already knew that topics like nudity were more taboo in the US, but I didn't realize how common it was for schools here to teach abstinence only instead of comprehensive sex education and that they sometimes even try to straight up shock students by showing them explicit images of sexual transmitted diseases or of giving birth in order to keep them from having sex. And another topic that kind of caught me off guard was when I talked to my friends about their teenage relationships and how those were handled in their families because it was very different from what I experienced being a teenager in Germany. Now I did make a video about the differences in sex education back in 2019. I'm going to link that up here and in the info box for you. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. I did a lot of research for that video and I also had some friends share their own experiences with sex education in the American school system. But today I want to share a conversation that I had with Sarah and Kevin from the channel My Merry Messy Life. They're an American family with four kids from Atlanta, Georgia who moved to a small town in Bavaria in 2021 and I published a video with them last fall in which we talked about what it's like to raise kids in Germany compared to the US. And I was also on their channel talking about the German alcohol culture and my experience growing up with that. But there was one part of the conversation that I haven't published up until now, where we talked about sex education and teen relationships. So here it is. <laughs> We've already been talking for a while and there's a not whole other um, part of being uh, a kid and a teenager in Germany that I wanted to touch on and it kind of ties in with, with what we just said about like parents and kids having a different relationship in Germany overall that's my experience at least and um, mm -hmm. it has to do with topics like sex education and like having mm -hmm. a partner for example I've, I have a whole video on sex education where I talk about that more in depth but we have sex, sex education I think earlier and it's a lot more common to have um, comprehensive sex education in German schools and then on top of that, um, when I grew up, it was t totally normal to have a boyfriend or girlfriend at the age of 16, 17, 18. And it was also totally normal that that boyfriend or girlfriend was kind of part of your family. So like me and my <laughs> friends, most of my friends, um, it was normal for um, at the age of 16, 17 to have our boyfriend and or girlfriends stay the night at our place, which was obviously at the time our parents' yeah. place in our Kinderzimmer. Mm -hmm. And like on the weekends, that was like normal. If we would go out with our partner somewhere to a party, my mom would sometimes pick us up, which also ties back into what we're going to talk about later on <laughs> in your guys' video about like partying and alcohol. Like my mom would just pick us up or my parents would pick us up and drive us back home. And like it was normal. It was more like, where are you guys staying tonight? Are you staying at his place or, or your place? Like <laughs> it was like everyone knew that, you know, the couple is going to sleep in the same place and that was not um, a taboo topic and a lot of families including my family would even take that partner on family vacation with them and yeah then I came to the U.S. and I met all these people here and it was all like, wait, what do you mean? Like, I couldn't no have way. I couldn't have a boy over. Like, if they were over, the door would have to be open. It couldn't stay the night. Yes. And uh -huh. So basically, yes. I know that uh -huh. I just told yeah. like a very Hand long check story. every five minutes. <laughs> so I wanted to ask Hopefully. you guys how you're handling this. Oh Maybe my. you've always handled it differently because it kind of sounds like you've always had a different approach than other American families. But um, yeah, well, what's been your experience with this? I know your kids are still a little bit young for that, but how are you going to handle it? And what's your experience uh, with it? I yeah, know. so our current kids, I mean, our current kids, <laughs> we have ones that, um, our kids, none of them have really had a boyfriend or girlfriend so far. 
So yeah. we haven't had to experience that yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I have not thought about them spending the night yet. Yeah. I haven't even, it no. hasn't even crossed my mind. I don't know. Because it's not done at all, like you said, in the US. Yeah. I mean, okay, the first serious boyfriend I had was, I was 21. And now my parents were very conservative, very religious. Okay. And he, so we're, he's off at college, I'm in college. And when he would come over, we always had to leave the door open. We could never be by ourselves, like completely by ourselves alone in the house. This is 21 years old, you were an adult, old, by the way. yeah. Yes. See, one. Yes, exactly. Like um, if we were cuddling too much, they'd be like looking at us like, oh, what are you doing? Where are your hands? You know, things like that. <laughs> Hand now, check. Yeah. Now that's very conservative. Not all parents in the US are going to be like that. But, but even in my family where we were not conservative, it would absolutely not have been allowed, you know. Mm -hmm. you, For them to spend the to night. To spend the night? No, that, that, you defi that's definitely very not Very taboo, yeah. yeah. And then like, and then when we were dating, okay, so I had a full-time job. I was a, a, a complete adult, right? I had left the house, I had my own house and Kevin had his own house, right? Or you had apartment. your own apartment. Anyway, so we both had to stop the leases on our apartments mm -hmm. before our wedding because we were moving to France right after we got married. So we stopped our leases, which ended a couple of months before our wedding. So we moved in with my parents. Even then, I'm 24. And he's- We were about to be married. We were yeah. soon gonna be married. In a and we're both full-fledged adults. Even then- I slept in the basement. Could not sleep in the same room. <laughs> he slept in the basement, left the doors open. That's I mean, crazy. You know, now I look back on that yeah. and uh, I so, won't be sending my parents this link. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, what are we, what are we gonna do with our kids? I don't know. We honestly have not what thought about that. Do? That That is a little bit tricky, you know, I Sweden is very similar so I, and I lived there a long time ago so I've already known that 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 was sort of the way they did it in Sweden but mm -hmm. I don't know that will be a little bit of an adjustment for us but yeah. we we don't want our kids to be like the freaky conservative Americans or something I, I don't yeah. know we'll, I guess we'll navigate it as we do it and, yeah. and see <laughs> we'll do what's best for them and yeah but that yeah. is a big, big difference. And it's yeah. definitely still that way for the most part in America. I think. Yeah, 100%. Like, I still witness it here every day. And, like, maybe it's a little bit different in your area where you are in Germany. I'm not sure because, like, obviously I grew up in a big city and you're True. more on the countryside. Mm. So maybe yeah. your kids' friends are going to be raised more conservative, too. I don't know. Um, but I think it's more like a German thing. I don't even think it's necessarily a city versus countryside thing. I think it's just a yeah. German youth well, thing. Well, actually, like, in the... Uh, you know the Trachtenverein here, which for our viewers, it's the like the local folk dancing, folk music club. You could say um, so. The local where you wear dandels and lederhosen, and you learn all the folk dances, and they perform in all the festivals. So the local they have quite the reputation for being very sexually active. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it is happening right around here. So. Yeah. And, and drinking a lot, which we'll talk about in the next video. Yeah. But you probably have had experience with sex education yet, because like two of your kids yes, are already in gymnasium, me. and I think some schools even have it mm -hmm. in fourth grade already. So what's been your experience with that? I think you're right. If I remember right, Grayson did do some in maybe he did in fourth grade but yeah they have definitely had it in gymnasium i mean sex ed is is definitely a thing in america too yeah it is maybe required i'm not sure you can opt out of it if, if your okay. parents want you to okay and you can here too you can opt out of it here too Okay, see, I didn't even know that. I don't think anyone did that in my school, but at least in the U.S., like the big difference is that a lot of sex ed is really just abstinence only, where they don't yeah. really teach you a whole lot, so you don't actually <laughs> no, get sex like, education. No, here's sex. Don't do it. <laughs> exactly. Stay away from it. It will kill you. So, <laughs> so you I would personally <laughs> argue that that doesn't really count, to be honest. <laughs> no, no, I agree. Yeah, it doesn't really work. But on that point, I do remember that I got a letter from the school here in Germany letting me know that it was going to happen. And I think I did have some choice of how I wanted it to happen. So they okay. did communicate that to us here in Germany. But but yeah, here it's about this is what happens. You know, it was much more informative. But yes, in America, it's basically, you know, very much abstinence only. And it's all about trying to scare the kids into not doing it. I will say though, when I did sex ed, I don't remember that being part of it when no? I was in middle school. Okay. That's good. We did it in sixth grade and it was 
very heavy on sexual abuse. Okay. okay. And there were many kids who realized they were being abused. I remember. And they were mm. pulled out of class and they went and talked to the counselor because they realized they were experiencing it. Uh -huh. So that's very positive. Very good. And I remember learning tons about the anatomy okay. and, and the science yeah. of men Good. Yeah, and I mean, women's it's, it's reproductive systems. It's definitely not systems. the case that that doesn't, like, comprehensive sex education doesn't exist at all in the U.S. It's just shocking to a lot of Germans that, like, there are big regions of the U.S. and a lot of school districts where they do teach abstinence only. But then, of course, there's also other schools yeah. where they do teach actual sex it education. It depends <laughs> on the school district. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we were talking, it's very dependent yeah. on that, yeah. too. Yeah, so did your kids, like, come home and talk about it at all? Was, it, was <laughs> there anything awkward for them? Well, actually, we taught them before they went to school we gave them a book well even before we okay. moved to germany we had bought, we were That's pretty I mean. we were pretty forward on that that we wanted them to know because when you're nine happening. years old start things start changing when you're about nine nine to ten i so. mean some girls get their periods at the age of nine yeah, yeah. So right, so we gave them a book, yep. and that's uh, that our two, um, our oldest loves to read. So that was a great way for him to process it, and he could come to us when he had questions. Yeah, so we had already. It was a non-issue. They yeah. were just like, okay. And then and I was know, like, okay, that's it. You don't have questions. Well, no. and, and then there's like the part in the book where it's actually saying, oh, well, this is how intercourse happens to make a baby, and we're like, you know. They didn't even hardly notice that part of the book. There were all these other parts yeah. that, that they focused on. And, and so, you know, the part yeah. that we were like worried about turned into be a nothing burger, you know? And yeah. So, <laughs> it's just <Yeah>. funny. <laughs> uh, well, I have one last question on that topic. Have you heard of the German youth magazine Bravo? No. No. Okay. No. I have to admit, I'm not quite sure if it's still as out there as a print version because, I mean, times have changed since I was a kid. But I know that yeah. I think even kids nowadays still know of it because they still have like an online presence and everything like that. Um, but in my youth and all the other generations before me, I think starting in the, I don't even know, 80s, 70s, maybe even, I don't know when they started. Bravo has been like such a big factor in sex education, it's technically a youth magazine where it's a lot about like, you know, celebrity interviews. Nowadays, there's like TikTok stars, YouTube stars. You get your posters, like you get it, like all your little things that you would get in any other youth magazine. But then on top of that, they have a section called Dr. Sommer. And I think that's like mm -hmm. one of the main things how like half of Germany has gotten their sex education <laughs> on top of the formal sex education. It consists of two different parts. It is a question and answer part. And then on top of that, it has two nudes in every magazine and then they talk about like why they love their bodies basically so like different person every time different look of a person yeah, different exactly. type body wow, types wow that is awesome so i think that part i mean it sounds like from an american perspective it sounds like oh my god that that's so sexual but yeah. that was like never really the point of it it was more the point of like everyone looks hmm. different when they're naked and that's fine and then like here's why you should love your body and then this other part that was awesome. wow questions that, that people could send in. I'm not quite sure if they actually chose actual questions or if they just made up questions, but it was basically about like, you know, having your first sexual experiences and they would always teach you things like don't ever do anything you're not ready for. If you and your boyfriend or girlfriend feel ready, you can start try doing Teaching this, consent. like ease into <laughs> it. Exactly. Like always make sure you're using birth control, blah, blah, blah. And that was yeah. like such a big thing. They would always kind of repeat the same so much healthier. message overall like right. that you know yeah, it's, yeah, wow. if you're ready for it it's fine but like don't do anything and like make sure you you can go to the gynecologist by yourself like that's the thing in Germany you can like get birth control by yourself if you need to there's like different resources you can go to by yourself and like that was a, oh, that wow. was a big thing so I was I was wondering if maybe your kids consume that too because like back in the day no, every wow, Wednesday cool yeah. the new one would come out <laughs> we would all go to the store get our new Bravo <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, wow. Of course, it wasn't That's just really about cool. that part, that. but it was also about that. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. Wow, no, that is sounds... so healthy and so good. Yeah, I've even noticed that just living here in Germany and seeing, um, I haven't even talked about this in a video yet, but seeing moms, because I'm a mom, who's uh, obviously have had babies. <laughs> um, and, and even though their bodies, you can clearly look at their belly and see they've had a baby while, while you're in this, I'm sorry, I should have said while you're swimming mm -hmm. and they've got on a bikini. In the US, most moms 
wouldn't be caught dead in a bikini because you're so embarrassed of how your body has changed so much. And especially if, if you've had one kid, not so much, two kids, maybe a little, but once you've got gotten past two kids, your stomach huh. looks a lot different and there's no way around it. Right. Um, except with the tummy tuck, there really isn't. It doesn't matter how much exercising or, um, you know, how much you stop eating, you're going to have loose skin. It's yeah. like those people who lose extreme amounts of weight, right? They have the loose skin and they have to get surgery to remove loose skin. And, um, uh, I, I have, uh, what I'm trying to say is my relationship with my own body has changed a lot since moving to Germany because German women are so much more comfortable with their bodies. And I love it. You just see them, like I said, with their bikinis on, it doesn't matter their weight. It doesn't matter their fitness level. They've got a bikini on. And I'm like, good for you. You look, you know, you're confident, yeah. you're running around with your kids and you don't give a shit. Like you just don't care. <laughs> And I don't think they do. And maybe it starts with things like Bravo, where exactly. you're seeing that's these pictures seeing. of all these different looking Bodies people and, knowing that and seeing, hey, yeah. that's normal. Other people look like that. That's really cool. Yeah. So I, maybe that plays a part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should probably add that, of course, this doesn't mean that body shaming and insecurities don't exist in Germany. But I thought that was a really interesting observation that Sarah had. So a big thank you to Sarah and Kevin for joining me for this conversation and for being so open with me. If you're not subscribed to their channel yet, you should definitely head over to My Merry Messy Life and check them out. Now I would love to hear about your experiences with these topics. How were teen relationships handled in your family? Was it more of a keep the door open type of situation or a let's bring your partner on family vacation with us. And what was your sex education like? Whether that was at school, through parents, or through things like the Bravo magazine. And if you have kids, how are you handling the topic with them? I know lots of questions. Put your answers in the comments below. Just please make sure to keep the comment section respectful. I mean, we don't usually have a problem with that in this community, but I do want to make sure that we create a safe space for everyone sharing their experiences with us. If you found this video interesting, make sure to hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. That would actually help me out a lot. And if you want to support me beyond that, you can do so on Patreon. You can buy me a coffee on ko-fi.com or you can simply hit the super thanks button underneath. For more content about Germany and cultural differences to the US, make sure to also check out my podcast, Understanding Train Station, that I do with my friend Josh, who's an American living in Germany. And follow me on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook, where I also always post additional content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!